few months ago, she was just on a, uh, they were just twerking on a car, showing her body to the whole world. Saying F nigga free. Pregnant. F nigga free. more important, the kingdom of heaven or pet rally? Is what? You see that? He said kingdom of heaven, but he, he walking off to go to the pet rally and what's going on in there, right? He said, Matthew so what, what's, what's more important? The kingdom of heaven or what's going on around you right now? What you think? Heaven? You think we, you think we, the, the, we them regular guys that stand up in the church and stand up, clap hands, stuff your feet? That what we look like? We look like cute dogs, huh? We got on purple, we look like cute dogs, huh? No, we're not cute dogs. We're your brothers that have come to show you the greatest message that this HBCU can't teach you. That's right. This HBCU teaches every other philosophy except the fact that you're an Israelite. The guy said, what's your nationality? Now you're saying what? You're looking like, oh, I'm ashamed. You know why you shouldn't be ashamed? Because the man that died for you is a black man. That's right. But I guarantee you in this HBCU, 97% of the people think he's white. So knowing your nationality is the gateway to the kingdom of heaven. Right. Do you think do you think that that's relevant? You say heaven. What's your name? What's your name? Sha? What's your name? Yeah, what's your name? What is it? Nori? Nori's not Sha. What's your name? Naya. Nori and Naya. In and in. So the question is, why is it so important to know your nationality? Because when you filled out the application, this y'all first year in school? First year here? Y'all don't go here? Where y'all go? Benedict? Y'all high school. Okay then, that makes, even, that makes it even more easy. In high school, right? When you get your tests, or when you, you got, y'all got jobs? Why y'all ain't got no job? Too young? If you had a job, right? On the job application, I know this brother can attest to it. On the job application, right? It gives you a name, it gives you a list of names for your race. What do you put there? Uh, I guess I should put other, but I'll, I'll do African, uh -huh. African American. So what would you put there when it says, what's your nationality, what would you put there? African American. Guess what? 99% of the school will put African American. You know why? Because even though they're in college, they have no idea what their true nationality is. God, is, not, is, is African American in the Bible? Is it? No, right? What do you think? Is African American in the Bible? You never heard that. Pastor never spread African American, right? So if we say we believe in God, we believe in the kingdom of heaven, and all these races on the earth are in the Bible, what is your nationality in the Bible? What does God call you? Give me Revelation 21 and 12. I'm going to show you something. Because it's easy to say, I want the kingdom of heaven. It's harder to put the work in. I can tell you on it, and you're like, I, need to, I just need to go. But the most I got you standing right here. We don't got you standing here. The most I got you standing here. Why? Because this word is not meant, it's not meant for everybody to repent. Everybody's going to hear this word, but the majority of the people that you see out here that's not going to receive this, in the day that Christ returns, they're going to die. Because everybody want to go to heaven, but they don't know how to get there. But I'm going to show you something. Read this real quick. Revelation chapter 21 verse 12. And had a wall, great and high. This is describing the kingdom of heaven. It has a wall, great and high. When you say you're an, you an African-American, come here, brother, look at this sign right here. Sister, look at this sign. 
When you say you're an African American, you're saying that you come from the tribe of Judah. But they don't teach that, not in school, not in high school, not in college, not even in the church where it's recorded in the Bible. Our people don't learn that the American blacks are Judah in the Bible. So now, the Bible, in the Bible, we're reading and describing the kingdom of heaven. It says the kingdom of heaven, it has a world great and high. Read. It has 12 gates. And the kingdom of heaven has 12 gates. Why do you think the kingdom of heaven have 12 gates? What do you think? What do you think, brother? Why do you think the kingdom of heaven has 12 gates? Because here in South Carolina, especially these surrounding areas, you learn in these churches that the kingdom of heaven has one gate, the pearly gate. Right? You heard that? We're going to make it to the pearly gate. There is no pearly gate. It says the kingdom of heaven had what? Had 12 gates. Got 12 gates. That's one lie that we've learned in church, that the kingdom of heaven had a pearly gate. The Bible says 12 gates. Read. And at the gates, 12 angels. Y'all been to a club before? You better say no. Y'all been to a club before? Y'all been to a party before? A private party? When you go to a, a private party or anything, what, who's standing at the door? Security, right? Yeah. Security is that. Why is security at the door? Because stuff be he, so that the, so that you don't get in with knives, guns, to make sure that you're supposed to go in, right? Security is that security to make sure you get in. So the kingdom of heaven has twelve gates, and it has twelve angels at those gates. All right, those angels are there to restrict the entrance and exit of people. I Meaning, if you don't belong here, you're not coming in this gate. Read on. And names written there wrong. So the twelve eight gates with the twelve angels, they got names written on the gates. Let's see what the names are. Which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So if the twelve gates that enter into the uh, kingdom of heaven has names written on them, and those names are of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, why don't you think African American, or why is African American not going to get in? Bring it out. Because African American name is not a name that's on the gates. You see that? That's right. This is why it's important to know who you are in the Bible. You shouldn't be ashamed of that. You shouldn't be ashamed that you're the one standing here while hundreds of people are floating to, to go through sin. Hundreds of our people are going to commit sin against the Bible, against God. But guess what? Most I chose you right here today so that you could do what? Learn your nationality. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Hey, brother, how you doing? Watch this. What's, what's your nationality? What is your nationality? Watch this. You see that? And, and he, he, it's not, that ain't your fault. But if you ask all them two, them sisters over there that's looking over, looking over there like we crazy, if you ask them their nationality, they gonna say African-American too. Two white men. African-American is two white men. But you know what's the more important to most people out here tonight? Going to watch Gorilla perform. Gorilla is more important than the kingdom of heaven to a lot of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. And she is the same sister that two months ago had crooked teeth in her mouth. Two months ago, she was just on a, uh, they were just twerking on a car, showing her body to the whole world. Saying F, nigga, free. Pregnant. F, nigga, free. This is what our people tend to, this is what our people run to, and then what they give a sense of, what they give their attention to. Nobody wants to hear the word of God why? Because hearing it is going to require you to change. Right. When you hear the word of God, you can't stay the same. This brother just said his nationality is what? African American. Now, I'm going to show you something. Where does the name African American come from? Africa? Okay, now, where does Africa come from? Where does the name Africa come from? You call yourself that, right? But we don't really, and all, all of our people out here, they call themselves that too but they don't know the origin of the name Africa. They just say I'm African. Where does the name America come from? Let's ask these wise college students that go here. Where does the name America come from? Which white man? No, his name is Columbus. I see y'all trying to sneak off. Hey, listen, I am not holding you here. I'm not taking a string and holding you here. If you want to hear the word of God, you're going to hear the word of God. If Satan is playing on you to the point where you like, I just want to go have some fun. You, you belong to Satan. That's what you belong to. I'm just going to keep it a hundred with you. Because it's hard for black men and women to listen to what God says. It's easy to go and play with the, 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 the sin that we've been playing with. This brother says, America is a white man. You ain't on that phone. We, we, we see that trick all the time. <laughs> who, is, who, who is America? Where does America name come from? 
Y'all in, in high school, right? Who discovered America? Christopher Columbus? Yeah, that's what they say, right? That's what you was taught. Don't be ashamed of that. That you was taught that Christopher Columbus discovered America. Watch this. They taught us that Christopher Columbus discovered America, but the country is not named after Christopher Columbus. It's named after a man named Amerigo Vespucci. Amerigo name is a, is a his name is Amerigo Vespucci. That's where the name America comes from. Columbus just get Columbus Day. You see that? He got Columbus Day. Somebody else got their name on the actual country. So when you say you're African American, you saying you come from two white men. Is that possible? Did two did, could two white men white men birth a black baby? Can two white men birth a baby? So how you African American? But those are two white men. That's a lie. So now that you're not African American, what's your nationality? What would you say now? You can't use African American because that's two white men. Now what do you say? Huh? Look on the sign. You're who? Judah. That's who you are. You're the American blacks that came here like this. But you forgot your nationality. You forgot who you are. They made us forget because of these parties right here. They made us forget because they gave us a little bit of freedom or what we think is freedom and say, yeah, nigga, y'all can party now. You don't know who you are. You don't lost your nationality. You can go to these HBCUs where you're gonna learn our education and continue to run our system the way that we want it ran. This is what we're being taught here in America. Gorilla, they using her to further the ignorance of our people. Right. That's what they're doing with the system. Especially black women. Especially the black woman. She had crooked teeth. What you think they did to her teeth? They fixed the teeth. Right. They gave her a new wig. Right. They gave her new eyelashes. Little money in the bank. Now she look good to impress you young sisters. You know, it's a lot of young sisters like yourself. They look at her and say, damn, she made it. How she made it when we still at the bottom? Bring it out. As a people. We're still at the bottom. So the question is, how do we get back on the top as a people? How y'all sisters doing? Y'all want to hear the word of God or y'all don't care about it either? Y'all know it, so why you got on pants? Because the Bible said don't wear that. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's what we out here to do. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. You want, you want to see? I'm gonna show, I, I had to throw that rock to show y'all what our women and how they think. These are supposed to be the oldest sisters that's supposed to teach you. Can't teach nobody nothing. Can't raise daughters nowhere on this earth. Out here looking like sluts and whores when the most high God made you a queen on the earth. Read what you got. Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Bring it out. Different breed, of, uh, different breed of black men. We ain't them little soft dudes that, that got a Bible and can't read. Right. We're going to tell you what thus says the Lord. Right. 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 I'm throwing rocks now. Read. The woman shall not wear. That which pertained unto a man. All you half naked sisters that are ill shot of this baby, this is what the Bible is saying. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's a sister right there. Sister, you need to cover up that body that God gave you. That's what you need to do. All you half naked sisters and you dumb brothers that run behind these sisters need to change according to the word of God. You out here holding out your sisters. These sisters are, are, are love being whores. And don't want to change. Dang. God says a woman should not wear that which pertain to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are abominations. All you sisters in pants, these little tight mini skirts, and little tight bags with your ass showing, you are an abomination to the most high God. Yes, if Christ came back right now, he will put you to death. That's what's going to happen. We are here to give you warning from the most high God. Don't think we're just some old regular brothers that can read the Bible. No, we're the prophets of the Most High God, about to set order on this earth. The woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man. Y'all sisters here, you can walk away. I know none of y'all are coming to the Bible anyway, so I'm going to just throw the word of God and hit you with this rock. The Bible says a woman shall not wear that which pertained to a man. You like a damn man with the pants on. Okay, how tight you wear with all your ass. Sean, you are a whore according to God. Right. It might be funny right now, but it ain't gonna be funny when you get smacked with that hot rod of fire. Right. Yes, right. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God. You're abomination to God. Right. Right. You like throw up to God. Right. You like dog poop to God. Right. That's what you are. 
But you love death. These brothers out here, they simple as hell. They love death. Bring it up. They don't want to hear nothing about being a king. They rather say, I'm a, I'm a gangster. I'm a thug. You're an Israelite? You're an Israelite, man? What's today? Today? Yeah, what's today? Right now. Yeah. Now, you're an Israelite, right? You know you're an Israelite. You know you're an Israelite. What is today? The sun is down. What is today? It's the Sabbath, bro. It's the Sabbath, bro. That is, it is Saturday right now. When the sun goes down, it begins the next day. You see what I'm saying? We got to cut, bro. We need you brothers who know you Israel to not mingle with these niggas out here. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta correct this wickedness going on. All these sisters out here with these tight ass pants on, y'all should be snacking up upside the head with the Bible. That's right. Snacking them upside the head with thus saith the Lord. You know you an Israelite. How much more is the punishment for you when Christ come back versus them that don't know? He know you an Israelite. He don't know you an Israelite. So when you look at this sign, do you care? What's your nationality? Yeah, what's your nationality? You see that? Y'all friends. He should know he ain't ain't no such thing as an African American. You go to school here? Where you go to school at? In New York. What school? You see Israelites all the time. Right. You see Israelites. You, on the corner in New York, there's an Israelite on every damn corner in New York. That's right. right. You should know, but more importantly, you brothers, you should tell him. Ain't no damn African American. African American is two white men. Right. Are those your forefathers? Hell no. Two white men can't produce black life or life, period. Bring it oh. out. So how you African American? You an Israelite. You see yourself on this sign right here? You fall under, under one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's right. South Carolina State ain't going to teach this. You know why? Because once you realize that you're an Israelite, you don't need this little, you get the education, get the job. But then you're going to realize it's not this that's going to get my people out of the, out of the condition that they're in. Right, right, right. Get, to get our people out of the condition that they're in, poverty, shot down in the streets every day, it's going to take us coming on one accord. Give me that in Zephaniah. It's going to take us coming back to the word of God and realizing that we are more than just what they've told us here in this country. We are the Israelites. We are not black. We are not Hispanic. We are not Native American. We are the God's chosen people that came here on cargo slave ships. That have accepted what this country has given us since we came out of slavery and have not woken up to the knowledge of who we are yet. God is commanding us to come back to the fold. That's why we are here. See, we ain't out here to party. They say we got no purpose, we must be kudos. But we ain't here, we ain't stomping the ground to show you no dance. We're stomping the doctrines out that's been placed in your mind. Right. See what you got. Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Bring it Gather yourselves together. Look at this sister right here. Nothing on. Naked as hell. Your parents will be ashamed of you if they knew you was out here like that. All right. The word of God will prevail. Yes, we read it from the Bible. If you don't want to hear it, guess what? You ain't got to. But in the day of Christ's return, you're going to be looking for them boys in purple. That's you're right. Looking for the prophets that tried to tell you. Read that again. Gather yourselves together. You see that? God says, gather yourselves together. Can we come together if you know you're an Israelite? He think he's African American. He think he's black. He think he's Muslim. He think he's whatever. Can we come together? We can. No, we can't. You know why? Because an Israelite is going to keep the Sabbath. The sun come down, we're keeping the Sabbath. A brother that don't know you're an Israelite, he's going to be breaking the Sabbath. A brother that think he's African-American or that he's black, he's going to the club tonight. Right. He's going to McDonald's after sundown to get something to eat. Bring it out. He's going to buy a hotel. On the Sabbath, there's no buying, no cooking, no cleaning, no selling. These are the things that are commanded of us according to our God. Because right. we're the only ones that have a God. That's why God said what? Gather yourselves together. Come on. Yay. Gather together. Oh, nation, not desire. We are the only nation on the planet that is not desired by any other race. Who else is desired? What other nation desires us? Tell me that. What other nation desires us as a people? Does China desire us? Does the white man desire us? What about uh, uh, Arabs? Do they desire us? God said what? Gather yourselves together. Yay, gather together, O oh, nation, not desire. Read on. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the child, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, huh? before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. The day of the Lord's anger is around the corner. You think we just out here for nothing? Nah, 
the, it, the day of the Lord's anger is upon the earth. We're here as representatives of the Most High God and His Son Christ to call those who hear the word of God back to the fold. Because everybody outside of this will see destruction. It's prophesied that two thirds of our people are going to die. What's that? Seven and ten? If you every for every ten people you cut out of here, seven of them are going to die. You go in there right now, it's three, four, five hundred, a thousand people. Tomorrow it'll be thousands of people out here. Every ten you count, seven is going to die of Israelites. Why? Because they do not want to hear the word of God. You know what? They think South Carolina got it, got it figured out. South Carolina State. They think Benedict got it figured out. They think Albany and Vidalsta and all these other schools they, with their college degrees, they think they got it figured out. Why you think they took the Bible out of school? That's right. Teach up. Yeah, right, a white guy started the school. Why do you think they took the Bible out of the schools? To do what? Yeah. She walked off. She said, they don't want niggas to know the truth. But you know what the truth is? The truth is you need to put some damn clothes on. Yeah. The truth is you sisters look like sluts and whores. And, and guess what? You probably are. You probably are. If you've had sex and you're not married, you're a whore. Right. God says the Lord. We ain't out here for no likes. This ain't Facebook. What give a damn about no like? We ain't gonna tell you what God says. And if you don't want to hear that, our job is done. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter 3. We're out here to give you warning. This is not our thing. We're not out here because we, you people like, well, what else? Y'all ain't got nothing better to do. Hell no. We ain't got nothing better to do but to raise our people up who are stuck under the philosophy of this way. Man. Hey, what you got? Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel Therefore, hear the word at my mouth And give them warning from me Give them what? Give them warning from me We are here to give you warning from the most high God You can look at us, laugh, say what you want But we're going to have the last laugh we're the ones that's going to be redeemed as long as we keep these commandments hey, 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 hey. When I say it to the wicked When you say what? When I say unto the wicked, everything that you see going on out here tonight is what? Wicked. It's wicked. God said what? When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. He ain't say I might kill you. He said you're going to surely die. Right. But hold that. Give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. He says you're going to surely die. Not I might kill you. Not uh, I'll think about it. No, he says you shall surely die. But we don't take that into consideration that we're going to die if we're not applying what's in the Bible. Right. This book has been made to be something great for all nations. Everybody can be saved. That is the lie that has been perpetuated on the earth to keep you out of your book, to keep you away from your history. Right. So now we run around in sin and we continue to perpetuate sin because we don't think there's going to be no judgment for it. God says you shall surely die. But watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 Because sentence against an evil work Because what? Because sentence against an evil work is not This is evil works The Bible says because a sentence You know what a sentence is? When you go before the judge what, And he give you a what? Sentence you to five years Ten We know what sentence is in the white man's court But we don't know what sentence is According to the word of God Jeez. Let me show you sentence This right here is sentence What do you call this? What is this called brother? Brother right here is going to school and move up. Come here. What's this called? It's a slave trade. It's the slave trade. It's slavery. Right. This is sentence for most our God. God said, okay, I chose you. I gave you the law, statutes, and commandments. I gave you the way of righteousness to teach and put a rule on the earth. You don't want to keep it? I sentence you to slavery. Not just one of you, the whole nation. Bring it out. And you're going to stay there for over 400 years until you realize that I'm your father. I gave you the earth. And then when you start waking up and your black men start raising up and owning their communities and ruling their people, then I'll give you back to earth. You're telling me you don't want to rule the earth? I know you feel like a god because you out here with no damn shirt on. Hey. It's cold as hell out here. He walking around with no shirt. I know you feel like you are. Uh, there's nobody or there's not another man on the earth that can match your capabilities. You feel like that, right? Yeah, I, do. I know you do. That's how we feel. Hey. But why don't we have what's ours? Why don't we have what's ours? This earth is ours. But you see what we got going on? Greek. We following the Greeks. Tomorrow they're going to be out here stomping and doing all type of foolishness. But you are God. Yes. 
right. So because the gods did rule the earth, he said, you know what? I sent it you to slavery. And we continue to push sin on earth. Why? Because we don't see the sentence of God being executed on us right now. We again. Because sentence, I guess an evil word, is not executed speedily. God said, because I don't execute my vengeance speedily. Because I don't give you sentence speedily. Meaning that if you are, are you married, brother, right here? Right here with the glasses. Are you married? You married, right? Your wife. And not tell her about it. Do you think you will be judged that, that same night? You will be judged at some point. Now listen to what God said. Because sentence against an evil word is not executed speedily. Meaning, the speedily meaning, if you committed adultery, you might live another two, three, four, five years, not tell nobody. And in the fifth year, you end up with AIDS. That's the most high giving you time to repent. Or you're getting judged at a later date. But if most I would have gave you AIDS the same night, you would tell everybody else, don't do that. Don't do that, bro. I did it. And I got AIDS the next day. Meaning, if you were to rob or kill a brother, you might get away for, you know, two, three, four days before they before they catch up with you, right? But God says, because I don't judge you immediately for killing your brother, because I don't put you to death because you killed your brother, therefore what? Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. It's set in us to do evil. We commit sin after sin after sin because God don't judge us for it. That's we right. break the Sabbath. God don't judge us for it, so we keep breaking the Sabbath. We commit fornication, keep having sex with all different types of different women, because God ain't judged us for it yet, we keep doing it. It says our heart, meaning our minds, is fully set to do evil. Now go back to Ezekiel. Read that in Ezekiel again. Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. So man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. You two brothers, y'all supposed to be watchmen unto these people. Look at, look at this. Look at what's coming down the street. They not practicing their own history. They are practicing Greek history. Right. That's Greek philosophy. Right. Come on, I need, I need to get that question. First, you gotta teach by your actions. Get up. We are that in Samuel chapter ten. Samuel chapter ten. They gotta see your actions. First, you gotta change you first. The change, for, uh, if you want somebody to follow you, you don't get to believe what you're saying and you're trying to tell them that you're the Israelites. They gotta see that thing in you. They gotta see it on you. Read what you got. Verse 7, chapter 2 and verse 3. Talk no more exceedingly proud. God said, don't talk no more exceedingly proud. Don't be out here just professing to be an Israelite. Don't just talk about it. Come on. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Come on. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. He said, don't let arrogancy come out of your mouth. Right. The Lord is a God of knowledge. Come on. And by him. By who? By him. By the most high God. Actions are weighed. Actions are weighed by God. Right. So now when you start changing you, when you start showing through your actions, look, I'm an Israelite. I'm walking like an Israelite. I'm dressing like an Israelite. I'm talking like an Israelite. When you go to a brother and say, hey, bro, you know you're an Israelite? They're going to say, wow, what is that? what's that? Now you can break it down to them. When, right. the, when the Spirit of the Lord starts dealing with you, He allows your spirit to further deal with somebody else. Right. You cannot expect people to listen to you if you're not the example of what you're professing they should be. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.